What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In the previous video, we finished off Angler's Tunnel, and in this episode, well, we're gonna do a little bit of side questing, a little bit of, uh, getting to the next dungeon, so... A bit of both. First things first, though, we're gonna want to go into this cave because inside is a very strange-looking fish, and, well, we can talk to it, so let's do it. I'm Manbo, child of the sunfish. Have you got an ocarina? Ah, uh, we do, actually. Ahaha, ha, then I can teach you my song. Bloop. Hit me with those tasty tunes. Wow, what a great song that was. And with that, we've learned Mambo's Mumbo. When you get out of the water, play it. Hmm, maybe we will. When you play my Mumbo, you can warp to a warp point around the island. Try this tune in the dungeons, too. And since today's a special day, I'll let you warp to Mumbo's Pond, too. Cha-cha-cha! Well, isn't that very kind of you? Uh, is there anything down here? Doesn't look like it. It seemed like you could go down there, and I thought maybe they hid some down there, but, uh, guess not. So yeah, the Mambo is, uh, very, very useful, as you can tell in the remake, since it lets you warp around the map. Uh, on top of that, we can go to Mambo's Point, which is an entirely new area that, uh, we haven't seen yet. But, before we do that, let's swim over to the right, because there is another hidden collectible that I would like to get, although... I guess the Mambo wasn't really that hidden, and really neither is this, but uh, I want to collect it now that we're here, now that we can actually swim in the water and dive down. Speaking of diving down, if we dive right here, we can get ourselves a piece of heart. Alright, still plenty more of those to collect. We've actually got a lot of collecting to do, and in fact, we're probably going to do a little bit of collecting in this video by uh, the way of secret seashells, so I guess... Look forward to that if you're into that. Anyways, now that we have the Mambo, as you can see, we can select them on the menu here. So let's do that and actually play this tasty tune. It is one of my favorite Ocarina songs in this game. Um, Alright, so first things first, let's head over to Manbo's Pond. Because there is something that we can do there and, well... There's also going to be like a secondary quest that's going to appear once we go here as well. And yes, there it is. The spooky pink ghost. Ooh, it's scary. Actually, it looks kind of sad. We'll deal with that in a second. For now, let's head inside this house and talk to this character. <laughs> Hi there, big guy. I'm Crazy Tracy. I've got a little secret for sale that'll pump you up. How about it? 42 rupees for my little secret. Uh, sure? <laughs> Alright, come here and I'll rub it on you. There, I've applied my own secret medicine. It will take effect when you lose all hearts. Drop by again, big guy. Here's some bonus treatment. Behold, your hearts are full. My hearts were already full, you scammed me. But yeah, so basically, uh, Crazy Tracy's medicine is kind of like a fairy. Although there are fairies that we can actually put in bottles in this remake, so... Kind of the same thing, except we just paid for it. But basically, when we die, we'll uh, respawn with all our HP. So it's pretty useful. Anyways, this ghost, um, normally it gives you a message. Um, but I guess it's not really talkative right now. So let's warp out of here and let's see. Where do I want to go next? I guess Martha's Bay because that's kind of where the ghost is going to tell us to go. But it hasn't told us that yet. So a couple of other things that we can do in this area while we wait for the ghost to, I guess, get a little more comfortable and talk to us. Because I'd like it to sort of give us its hint before we just, like, go and take care of the side quest. You know, it makes it feel more natural that way, I guess. And it's not just like, I know what I'm doing because I've played this game like a million times before. I mean, in some cases, I'm fine with doing that. But, uh, in certain instances, like for side quests and stuff like that, I like the game to, uh, sort of take control and sort of give us its hints and what to do. Anyways, um, over here, if I can get rid of these enemies real quick and clear out this area, there is actually a seashell that I totally missed. It's right underneath that rock. So, there we go. I could have picked this one up earlier. I just kind of forgot it was there. Now that we got that, though, ah, there we go. The house. Take me. 
the house at the bay. All right, so finally, I guess he got uh, comfortable enough with us to tell us where he wants to go. We've actually passed by this area um, a few episodes back when we were like going on our dates with Marin, taking her all around Koholan Island and eventually to Animal Village. But I'm not too sure if I pointed it out or not as we were walking by. But uh, if I could actually jump across this gap, yeah, the house on the other side, that's where the ghost lives. Here, enter my house. It's actually kind of strange. They added a little bit extra dialogue to the ghost uh, in the remake. And wow, what a dump. In all seriousness, though, I do kind of like this scene. It is a little sad, and um, the music's really nice here as well. So I'll just sort of let it play out. Nostalgia. Unchanged. Enough cemetery. Take me, my grave. Man, what am I? Your personal Uber? Can't you just like float there? I mean, how'd you even come to haunt me to begin with? Jeez. So yeah, this is actually like part of the main quest, I believe. I'm pretty sure this guy automatically shows up after you uh, complete Angler's Tunnel. Either way, let's make our way over to the prairie because that's kind of the closest warp point to where we need to go. Now he says cemetery and we've technically seen a cemetery, but that's not where he wants to go. He wants to go to a different grave site. It's in the same general area, but um, a little bit different, so just keep that in mind as we're going through here, I guess. I am trying to get some rupees, because I would like to buy the bow. Um, and we're kind of close, because I think it's like 790 rupees, I want to say. I actually don't remember how much it is. Hopefully it's around that range, because uh, we're getting pretty close to that. Um, Alright, now before we go to the gravesite, there is actually one more thing we can do here. So let's grab our shovel, because there is another shell that we can find. And it's, yeah, it's right under there in the center, so... Bam, another one to our collection. We should actually probably make our way towards the uh, mansion in this episode too. Anyways, here's his gravesite. <laughs> Thank you. A jar for you. Put something inside. Bye bye. Aw, he's a happy ghost now. See you later, friend. Oh wow, he actually gives us a jar. All right, I did not expect that. So now we have two fairy bottles. Interesting, that is actually new in the remake as well, since as I said, there were no like bottles in the original game. Hoot, it has been some time since our paths crossed, lad. You must dive into the waters of Martha's Bay to enter the catfish's maw. The closer you get to the windfish, the more restless he sleeps. Carry onward, hoot. So I'm actually kind of curious now because originally when you uh, return the ghost to the grave, he sort of gave you like a different hint about a jar and um, you had to go back to his house and you would actually find another shell there. So let's do that real quick because I want to see if it's still there. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be because like why would they change that but the fact that you also get like a bottle from this quest is pretty cool as well um I should probably actually catch a fairy at some point that way I can use those bottles and really a second I swear like I'm pressing the button guys it's just not working maybe I'm like doing it a little bit too late but like geez um, all right, so underneath one of these pods should be a shell there we go and yeah originally that's what the ghost was talking about he'd be like uh, a jar, something inside, and then you have to go back to his house, and then you would find that. So it's interesting how they changed it. I do like seeing all the differences they've made in this game versus, like, the Game Boy version that I've been playing, you know, since I was, like, a small child. So it is kind of cool. 
All right, um, now that all that is done, let's go back to the prairie and pick up another shell if we can, just because there's a few here and there that, like, we probably could have collected a lot sooner. It's just that I've never really spent the time to do it. And, um, like I said, I do kind of want to go to the mansion in this video and get ourselves, like, the next tier reward. So, you know, we're just going to have to spend some time getting some seashells. And actually, the next reward that we get is going to help us find the remainder of the seashells. So it all kind of works out, I guess. All right. That being said, um, guess what? We're going to go and get ourselves another seashell, guys. I know. You're super excited and pumped about it. So am I. But, uh, yeah, we want to make our way back towards Richard's cabin. Because I think now the way the flippers, there's, like, one near that little lake area towards the entrance to, I believe, the third dungeon that we can reach. So, yeah, it's actually underneath this little bush right here. So, we'll lift this bad boy up or, you know, chop it down, I guess. And bam! Get yourself another shell. Easy as pie. All right. Um, we have 17, I think. I think that's more than enough. To get the next tier. I think we only needed, uh, I want to say 15, maybe it was 10. I don't know. I'm not really keeping count, guys. I mean, I should be, because, like, obviously it's important, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, I say that now, but, like, the more and more we progress in this game, like, the more and more it's going to become a problem if I don't, like, start keeping track of, like, the ones I've collected and the ones I haven't, especially since there's a lot more in this game. But, uh, eh, whatever. We'll figure it out, man. Figure it out. Give me those rupees, man. I love it. Thank you, game. Getting so many of those blue rupees. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll definitely have enough to get the next tier. Perfect. Well, look at that green bar fill up, baby. All right. Well, I mean, it's something at least. So, for our next reward, we're going to get ourselves... A tuning fork, but not just any tuning fork. It's actually a seashell sensor. So this will sort of like make a noise anytime we're like in an area where there is a shell. So very, very helpful. Kind of glad that we picked that up. Also, yeah, you can talk to these trees. Never really showed it off because like, I mean, it's not really necessary, but uh, I guess I can do that now. So what's up, tree? How you doing? Well, that was a surprise. Hey, I'll tell you a secret. If you see a weird bowl all by itself in the middle of a cave, sprinkle some magic powder into it. It's a pretty good joke on the thing that lives in there. Uh, alright, I'll keep that in mind. I actually don't know what that's referring to. Anyways, um, let's go to Animal Village next because, well... Uh, we got the hibiscus a while back, and we know who wants it, so there's sort of like another element of that trade side quest that we can get going while we're here, and I want to sort of like keep that going as we're progressing the main plot, because otherwise, if I waited to like the very end, it would just take freaking forever. Give me that rupee. I keep missing some of the green rupees, because like they blend in with the background, but oh, there's a shell here as well. Interesting. I think we get that later, though. What's up, Miss Goat Lady? You were rude to me before, but... Oh, you brought me a hibiscus? How sweet! Yeah, your mood changed. Well, since you're such a gentleman, I have a request to make of you. Will you listen? Uh, fine. I would like you to take this letter to a Mr. Wright who lives on the border of the mysterious forest. Please. Alright, alright. I guess now we've become the mailman for this goat who was mean to us before, but changed her tune once we gave her a flower. Uh, let me just make sure we can't get this shell yet. I don't think it's any of these pots. Yeah, I didn't think so. Well, at least we got some payback and we broke all our pots. Alright, um... I guess we can probably make our way over to the Mysterious Forest and actually deliver this letter, so... Shut up, Marin. I got my own funky tune to play. Aw, yeah. We are certainly getting our use out of the Mambo. Like, I'm really glad that we picked it up because it is so incredibly useful in the remake, as I said. I think in the original version, um, it actually only went to the pond. So having it being able to go everywhere is such a huge improvement. Just another one of those, like, quality of life things that the remake does over the original, which, I mean, honestly, the remake does have some flaws. And, um, I'm sure I could talk about that, like, later on. I might do, like, sort of a retrospective video 
um, after we're done with the series talking about it because I do uh, want to like compare and contrast this game to the Game Boy version talk about what this game did right and talk about what it did wrong because there are a couple of things that I don't particularly like about the remake but um it is without a doubt uh, the definitive way to play Link's Awakening hands down like I mean just the fact that it's a Game Boy game remastered um, means something and oh you know what I kind of thought I forgot to pick up a shell in this square. Like, I knew this was here. Like, it's right underneath that dirt patch. But, like, I thought I had already grabbed it. So, that was a shell that, like, I thought I grabbed a while ago, but just forgot about it. I'm glad that we picked that up. Anyways, yeah, inside this house is where we'll find Mr. Right. So, let's talk to him. Also, a reference to uh, Sim City, I believe. What's this? A letter from me? I'm so happy. And look, the letter came with a photograph. Hey, it's Princess Peach. What in the world? That's kind of strange. Hmm, she's so beautiful. I must give you something for your trouble. Ah, uh, well, it looks like all I have is this broom. How will that be? Uh, fine, I guess. Awesome. We got a broom. But that photo was not of... Yeah, it wasn't of the goat. So, uh... I think that guy's getting catfished. I mean, I'm not gonna say anything, but uh, he's totally getting catfished right now. Uh, it's actually, wait, is it faster to go down this way? I don't think it is, but what's actually down here? I don't remember. Oh, this is where the mushroom is. Yeah, this would not be faster to go this way. So you know what? I'm out of here, man. Let's just go back the other way. I was thinking maybe that would be a shortcut, but uh, yeah, there's a reason why you don't go that way. All right, so now that we've delivered the letter, um, hmm, I'm trying to think like what's the next thing that we can do. Oh, we got the broom. So actually, let's make our way back to May Village and continue the trading side quest, if you will. Uh, so there's only like one other character we've seen with a broom, and it was very, very briefly like way back in the beginning of this LP. But uh, yeah, it was a little old lady over here. Let's talk to her, see what she's up to. Yahoo, Yahoo, a new broom. For me, it is, isn't it? Uh, sure, you can have it, I guess. Okay, in return, you can have this fishing hook I found when I swept by the riverbank. Oh boy, a new fishing hook. Well, certainly, that's better than the freaking broom. I don't know what we'll do with that, but I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. All right, um, hmm. You know, there actually might be something in the trendy game that we can do right now. So, yeah, let's go and check that out. Just because I think there is something in there that we can collect. There might be a shell, actually, that we can grab in here, which is notoriously hard to get, and there isn't a shell in here. All right, then. Um, You know what? I really don't want to play the trendy game, then. <laughs> I was expecting a shell. There wasn't one there, so I'm not going to bother with that right now. I might actually have to grind for rupees uh, off screen at some point, just because, man, it is taking forever to save up all the rupees that we need. But I'll worry about that later. Hopefully we can get enough by the end of this episode to buy the bow. Let's go back to Animal Village though because we delivered that letter and now that we have, um, we can go and talk to the goat lady and I think that's how we get that shell that we were alerted to by our uh, tuning fork that we picked up. And I think that'll probably be the last shell that we get in this video considering we've gotten so many of them. And hey, the old lady made her way to Animal Village. Wow, she's sweeping over here now. You do you lady, cleaning up the environment. One broom at a time, I guess. Whatever, let's talk to the goat lady. You got the letter to my dearest Mr. Wright. Bravo! I'm not kidding when I say this means a lot to me. I want you to have this seashell as thanks. Wow, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I loved being your errand boy just for a freaking shell. It's not like you can just, you know, find those on the beach naturally. No, I had to get this one from you. All right, um, let's try and grind up a few more rupees if we can, because I think we almost have enough to get the bow. Watch me, like, not even be close. That would be really unfortunate, but whatever. Let's go back to May Village and hopefully, hopefully, we can buy the bow. Like, I know it's been a little bit between videos, so I kind of did forget, like, how much it actually costs, but, uh, I would like to buy it, because, I mean, we don't really need it yet, per se, but um, honestly, the sooner we get it, 
the better. It's just going to make our lives a lot easier. And there's so many like things in the overworld that we can do once we get the bow. So kind of do want to grab it. Um, if we don't have enough, I might actually grind for rupees between videos just so we do have enough to get the bow before we go to the next dungeon just because, I mean, I want to. 980 rupees. All right, not even close. Wow, that is unfortunate. Um, I honestly thought it was only like 750, so that's my bad. Um, well, crud. And that's like a significant amount more than what I thought it was. So I guess that's where I'm going to end off this video. Kind of anticlimactic, I know, but really can't do anything else. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.